Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be providing an update on the bull market support ban. We'll of course, of course look at the 50-week estimate, the 200-week estimate, see where the last week came in, and, and we're, what we're looking at this week. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, then check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we actually had an interesting development this week. Uh, like many of you, I'm sure, or I, like many of you, were probably watching the weekly close, sort of see where it would come in, namely because the price of Bitcoin has, has been wrestling both with a 50-week moving average and the 200-week moving average. And you know, they might not seem like very important levels, but the 50-week is, is actually quite symbolic, I, I think, of, of sort of the health of, of Bitcoin you know, either whether it's below it or, or whether it's above it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the video. To provide the sort of the first update with the bull market support band, it is, you know, still trending higher. It's currently between 19.6 uh, to 21.2 or so. So it ranges from almost 20K up to around 21K. You know, that's generally the range that it's at right now. So, you know, if Bitcoin were to roll back over, I imagine that would be where the bulls would want to try to hold uh, in the event of, of a pullback. But what's more interesting to me right now than the 20-week and the 21-week EMA, 20-week estimate and the 21-week EMA are the 50-week estimate and the 200-week estimate. Now, we did a video a little bit ago on, on golden crosses and death crosses. So if you remember that on the daily time frame, we had a golden cross. And what did we say about golden crosses? If you remember, what did we say about a golden cross? Is that normally when you have a golden cross, you get a dump right after it. 10, 15% is, is, is actually quite standard. And in this case, from the Golden Cross, you can see that Bitcoin dropped around 8, 9% or so. So a fairly standard move after you get a Golden Cross. But what did we also say? That normally when you get a Golden Cross, at least in the short term, the trend still remains intact, right? I mean, so like, you know, Bitcoin's trending higher, you get a Golden Cross, and then you get a dump right after the golden cross which we see time and time again and every time you know every time we get a golden cross we, we talk about this and um, a lot of people don't want to believe it but then we, we get a dump and then we we sort of gen then continue the trend um, the main sort of caveat to this time of course is in, at least in the short term bitcoin has continued the trend and, and recently pushed as high as what 25.2k 25.3k somewhere in that ballpark of course depending on the exchange that you use um, but in the same manner, we also had a, a death cross in the weekly time frame. Now, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of weekly death crosses on the S&P 500. Generally speaking, these, you know, these crosses are just lagging indicators. They more or less tell you what you already know. But what's funny is with the golden cross in the daily time frame, we saw a dump right after it. Here on the weekly death cross right after it, we saw a pump. Right. So it's funny because typically what you see when these, you know, when these things play out is, you know, if it's a golden cross, you normally see um, the price dump in the short term, followed by a continuation of the trend. And if it's a death cross, you'll often see the, the, the price pump in the short term, followed by the continuation of the trend. So just a couple caveats there. And, and I, I think it's worthwhile to, you know, to, to look at these moving averages, not to say that it's impossible to break them. I mean, you can see that, that Bitcoin broke through the 200 week SMA back in August. I mean, you know, we, we, we came back above the 200 week estimate back over here, but it is at least notable to sort of consider that, you know, when you look at this chart, Bitcoin spent a decent amount of time above the 50 week last week, but at the very end of the week, we were unable to close above it, right? We saw sell off going into the weekly close, unable to actually close above the 50 week moving average. Now, the reason why it's somewhat important is if you go back and look at 2019, you can see that the breakout of the 50 week led to a sustained rally for a while. But if you go back to 2015, we got rejected by the 50 week. Um, and this was basically by July of 2015. I mean, this was a year and a half after the bear market had started. So, you know, it's not to say that you can't get rejected by the 50 week just because we're, we're out of 2022. And we saw a rejection by the 50 week as late as mid 2015. And, and so, Arguably, this 50-week moving average is, is a somewhat important level. It's a, a line in the sand that's worth watching. 
2015 was rejection and it led to sort of the collapse of the price of Bitcoin. And in 2019, it was it we, we went above it and um, and ultimately it, it led to sort of um, uh, another surge in the price of Bitcoin before going into another like, you know, six to nine month bear market or something like that. And if you look over here, you'll see we had a wick above it come back down. And then the following week we, we shot through it. Right. You go to 2015. We sort of wicked up to it. The next week, we just simply got rejected off of it and came back down. So this week is is going to be, I think, a very interesting week. To be completely honest, right? Does does Bitcoin rally through it and close above it, or does it just get does it just get you know shot back down? You can see that we actually wicked above the 200-week SMA. Now, if you're curious where the 50-week SMA is, it's a moving target. So last week it was around 24.7 or so. But this week it's come down. It's now around 24.5, really to be exact, 24.461 or so, but around 24.5 is, is really where it is. So we sit just below the 50-week moving average. And we also sit just below the 200-week moving average, which is now at 25.1. So, you know, I know a lot of people are calling for, you know, a surge to 30K or, or you know, whatever it might be. And that's always in the cards if, you know, if Bitcoin can, can, can break through. But, this still is an important level, and, and we haven't really broken through it yet. Um, and, and there are some things to keep a look at, you know, keep an eye on, right? Like the dollar is has been in sort of like this, you know, this weekly uptrend for a while now. And and I mean, and we talked about this, you know, as well. I mean, after about four months, similar to the 1980s, uh, we saw a surge in the in the, in the dollar. Um, you know, after about a 16 week move to the downside, this was I think a week longer, but we have seen the dollar at least move higher here in the short term. So um, that's something that, that Bitcoin's going to have to face. And now I imagine if the dollar rolls over here, then, then Bitcoin can see so sort of see that breakthrough. But if the dollar continues to inch higher, then I do imagine it's going to put some of that, you know, some it's going to put some headwinds on, on some of these risk assets and make it so that it's a little bit harder to break through these levels. Because as the dollar continues to rally, it's a sign of risk off um, and, and it's going to make it harder and harder uh, if that is the case, now if the dollar sells off, then um, you know perhaps we we would have the strength to to ultimately break through. And of course, the other reason why we're we're interested in in these levels is going back to the worst case scenario video series where you know the Nasdaq ultimately saw uh, a rally into the 50 week after you know after the bear market um, was mostly over, but was unable to get through and had one more rejection and and move back to the downside. So I think that this is actually a, a pretty important level to watch this week. Okay, now wicks above it are good, um, you know, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything if, if we just come right back down and, and put weekly closes back below these levels. So, you know, if, you, if you're really looking for that sustained push to the upside, these are the lines in the sand you need to get past. If you don't get past these, and, and you sort of, and, and Bitcoin stalls out here, like, you know, like the NASDAQ did during the dot-com crash, or, or like we did in mid-2015 after a rally to the 50-week as well. I mean, this rally from this low here, sorry, this was 2019, um, 2015 from this wick low here, this was about a, a nine, an 80, a 90% rally. If you don't cherry pick the wick, it was about a 52% rally or so. Um, so, this is a, a level to watch this week is, is, you know, can Bitcoin ultimately break through and sort of set a, a, a new course here in the short term? Or do these levels provide too much resistance for Bitcoin? Um, and, and that's why I think that's really what to watch for over the next couple of weeks is, is can we break through or do we just see continued consolidation just below with the inability to break through in a sustained manner? So that's what you're looking for. And even back in August, we got above it, but you never really saw any follow through, right? Like we got above it here. And then the next week we, we came back down a little bit, got above it in a, in a more significant way in, in early August. But then the following week, we just came back down below it once again. So that's sort of the line in the sand to watch this week. And it's arguably a much more important level to watch than the bull marks for fan. I mean, the, the 20 week SMA, the 21 week EMA, I mean, they're always there. If, if, if and when Bitcoin dumps, I mean, it'll dump eventually, just a matter of from what price. Um, so they're always going to be there, but we, we still sit just above 
you know, the 20 week estimate, 21 week EMA, and it would actually take a fairly substantial pullback to the downside to get back to the 21 week EMA, about a 13% move to the downside. To get to the 20 week estimate, it'd be about a 20% move to the downside. So, um, and, the, and these levels will continue to sort of slowly trend higher uh, until, until we see that pullback by, by Bitcoin. So, just something to watch for this week. I mean, you know, we have these we have these key moving averages that have have plagued Bitcoin for for quite a long period of time, and I, I, I think I think our attention is is deserved to be put on these long term moving averages, given the inability of Bitcoin to really break through them in a sustained way so far, or at least over the last um, you know really at least since late 2021. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We have several different tiers, including a free one. Links in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye.